All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. We're looking at Bedlam, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. The Pokes will host the Sooners. This one will be on prime time, maybe C, 7.30 Eastern time. Three and a half point line in favor of the Cowboys. 52 is the over-under. Series has been utterly dominated by the Sooners. Not only have they won six in a row, they've also won 90 times to 18 for Oklahoma State. So it's literally been complete dominance all time in this series. So the scenarios for the Big 12 title game, if Oklahoma wins this game, then the Pokes will rematch with them the next weekend in Arlington. If Oklahoma State wins and Baylor beats Texas Tech, it will be Oklahoma State and Baylor for the crown. So the Pokes are uh, pretty much already locked into Arlington, but they're still reviving for a playoff spot. So a lot on the line here. Let's get right into it. This Oklahoma offense, they've really struggled the last two weeks. Got stonewalled against Baylor. They were not impressive against Iowa State. The last two weeks, Caleb Williams, 17-36 to 36 passing, 229 yards, three picks, one touchdown. The passing game has just fallen off a cliff, really. They had under 100 yards in the last week's game. Very talented receiving group, though. You know, Marvin Mims, Jaden Hazelwood. Mike Woods is a burner. Mario Williams has done some good things out of the slot. But they just have not had a real passing game the last couple of weeks. Really, for the most part of the season, the production is not even close to what we thought it would be. Of course, we didn't even think this Caleb Williams would be starting this year. So it's been kind of a mess on offense for the Sooners. They've had, you know, they had a three-game stretch in the middle of the year where they ran the ball pretty well. Um, and they did so last week. Six yards per carry, 200 yards against a good Iowa State defense. But... They've not been good for the most part of the season. The offensive line does not generate a giant push. And when they do, it's pretty inconsistent. The pass rush, or the pass protection, that is, is not very great. This entire offense is just kind of centered around this offensive line this year. They've not been very good at all. I think this is just a bad matchup for them. They're really going to struggle. But Cale Williams, with his legs, he he's very good. He ran for a 70-plus yard touchdown against Iowa State. you see seen what he did against Texas. That really turned that game upside down. Um, you know, the good thing about him is he can not only run for touchdowns, but he can throw on the run with accuracy and precision. That's a real equalizer. His talent is in this game against a great defense. I love what he does on the run as a passer. It's very impressive. He can do it with a lot of arm strength, too. Uh, there's a play, multiple plays against Texas. That, just go watch that film. It was just highly impressive what he did against the Longhorns. Um, you know, he had a couple of highlights in the last game against the Cyclones, too. Overall, though, this offense, they need to... Just play better in the trenches. That's where it's all going to start. That's going to allow things to just kind of roll its way to success in the passing game and on the ground. Because they have all the talent in the world. Caleb Williams, I like what he provides as a playmaker. So that's where it's going to start. That's where it's going to end for Oklahoma in this game. Looking at the Pokes offense, they have a really strong running game. Dominic Richardson's really been involved the last two weeks. But this is still Jalen Warren's backfield. Complete bell cow. Utah State transfer is very elusive, very shifty. These guys run for 195 yards per game. That, um, you know, pistol formation they run, that zone play, the stretch plays, it's just very beautiful the way they run it. And when they have a back like Warren, they can make people miss. Uh, behind a big offensive line led by Josh Stills at guard. This is a really solid offense for Oklahoma State. The Pokes are nowhere near how they used to be. You know, once Mason Rudolph left the passing game, has never looked like this under Mike Gundy that I can think of. It's just not great. Tay Martin has been the catalyst of this passing game. With him out, they're just it's non-existent pretty much. Spencer Sanders, he's been playing much better here down the stretch. Three interceptions against Baylor on October 2nd since. He's only had two picks. He was really good against Iowa State on the road. He pretty much almost won them that, won them that game. Their defense, that was the only bad game they had all year, really. Um, outside of Tay Martin, though, it's not... Really much at pass catcher Brendan Presley. He's a great jump ball guy. He gets downfield vertically. He can win one-on-ones. Other than that, though, it's kind of a committee at pass catcher. They don't have a big tight end. They can streak. Because um, Oklahoma last week, that was kind of their biggest weakness late in that game. We'll get to that in a minute. But they don't really have a tight end. They can kind of take advantage of the middle of the field. I think they have nice matchups on the outside. But it's going to start... And then with the running game for Oklahoma State, we just talked about the Pope or the Sooners offensive line. Same goes here for the Cowboys. That's their identity on offense. The OU defense, man, this was a very impressive performance they had last week. They had four forced fumbles, fumble recovery, touchdown, 11 tackles for loss, seven sacks. They held 
Iowa State and Brees Hall to 1.5 yards per carry, 51 total yards. Give them a round of applause. I've been waiting all year for Nick Benito, Isaiah Thomas, Perry and Winfrey, this phenomenal defensive line to have a game like this. I'm highly impressed. So give them a round of applause. That was a very good game from the Sooners, especially one week after they got dusted by Baylor. Um, you know, seven sacks. They only had four in the four games beforehand. They really showed up in that game against a very good opponent. Um, the biggest problem, though, is they got burned in that fourth quarter by tight ends. And if Brock Purdy doesn't overthrow a wide open Chase Allen late in that game, they would have set up a first and goal. They might have lost the game. Who knows? Um, they got burned by tight ends, though, big time. That's why I just mentioned that with the Cowboys. They don't really have that that type of threat. They can kind of stretch the middle of the field. Um the secondary, though, has still been a massive issue. Holding up one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know if they can against Tay Martin. Brendan Presley's going to have opportunities. The defense does not travel very well. They've not been good on the road. They were not good uh, at against Texas in a neutral site game. They're plenty capable, though. This defense, though, the heart and soul is the defensive front. I just named off three of those guys. Nick Coe, another one of them. That's where they're going to have to make their money. They're going to have to slow down this running game. They got some good pass rushers that can make plays against Spencer Satter Sanders and, you know, a sometimes shaky passing game. They got to do something to help out their secondary. They don't have a bad matchup per se, but they're still going to have to be able to hold up one-on-one. -on -one. Their secondary, though, they cannot cover at all, especially with the middle of the field. One-on-ones, I don't really trust any of their corners. That linebacker, you know, pretty average this year for the Oklahoma defense, kind of disappointing. So that's... The main part of their unit is the defensive line. However they play, they got to get penetration. They have to control the line of scrimmage or they're going to lose. That's just how it is for the remainder of the season for the Sooners. On the other hand, the Pokes defense has been phenomenal this year. They've not allowed more than 24 points or over or 400 yards once this year. They've been phenomenal. These guys are just insane. Brock Martin, Tyler Lacey, Colin Oliver, all those defensive ends. One week it's one guy, one week it's the other. All three of these guys can make an impact together or one shines as a whole, they are just so good. Malcolm Rodriguez and Devin Harper at linebacker, they've also been very elite. The last four games, they've only allowed, uh, they've allowed under 200 yards three of the last four games. Texas Tech, West Virginia, and then, you know, Kansas was in there. Two very respectable opponents. This defense is the real deal, and it starts up front with those guys. This 4-2-5 has just been so good for Jim Knowles. I think, you know, the secondary had its issues with Iowa State. That's really been it for the, for the entire year. They held off against Brees Hall in the run very well. Uh, I like Christian Holmes as an outside playmaker, as a tackler and a coverage guy. Tanner McAllister, Colby Hervell Pell, these guys all really understand their assignments pretty well. They're second. Uh, they got the second fewest touchdowns allowed nationally through the year. They don't allow much behind them. And with this pass rush being this good, this secondary just thrives so much. It's already hard to find creases against a five-man secondary a five-man zone, and then when you got this furious pass rush coming at you, this is as perfect as it gets, really, for a team like Oklahoma State with the system they run. It's very, very tough to do anything against them. They've just been shot out of a can in the last couple weeks, though. Again, they've held teams to in the hundreds the last four weeks. TCU, they, were, they had some yards, but they got absolutely blown out in that game. This defense is just... Highly impressive. And Jim Knowles is a great coordinator, too. You know, they're having troubles against Texas with B. John Robinson. That tempo, the explosiveness they provide. They had a massive play uh, at the end of the first half. It was a pick six in that game. And after that, they just completely shut down the Texas offense. Started putting defensive ends over the tackles. And that really uh, made it tough for the Longhorns in that game. And um, Iowa State, they had some success. But overall, this unit is highly impressive. It's one of the nation's best. Team comparisons. Quarterback will give the edge to the Sooners. Spencer Rattler as the backup. He might play in this game, but Caleb Williams, he's still – Spencer Sanders is not really there as a passer. Uh, he's never he has never really developed greatly. I mean, he's playing much better here down the stretch. I thought he was very good on the road in Ames too, but uh, it's not really a debate. Caleb Williams or Spencer Rattler, whoever, they're both better than Sanders at running back. you got to give the edge to Jalen Warren, Damani Richardson. These guys have some pretty good depth too. They have a much better running game as well. That's why the Pokes get the edge at the offensive line. They're much better in pass protection, too, than the Sooners. Wide receiver. Again, not really a debate. It is the Sooners. They have insane depth. Mims, Hazelwood, Mike Woods. I like what Mario Williams gives them. And Jeremiah Hall. He's pretty solid as well. 
Um, you'll see Eric Gray make an occasional play out of the backfield too. On the defensive side of the ball, all the advantages go to the Cowboys, even though the defensive line for Oklahoma's, I really like it. It's a very good one, but you really can't compete with uh, the three edge rushers that they have in Martin, Lacey, Oliver. It's kind of even, honestly, but I got to give the edge to the Pokes because they've done just a much better job this year against the run. Oklahoma, they've not been bad either against the run, but they did look terrible against Baylor. They can't travel, so that's that's another reason why the Pokes' defensive line has the edge in this game. Malcolm Rodriguez is probably the nation's top linebacker. Nobody talks about him. Uh, this guy is phenomenal. He's led, I think this is the fourth year in a row, he's led the team in tackles. Devin Harper's a, ton, a dynamic playmaker in his own right. Secondary, it's not a debate. Oklahoma can't really cover that well in Oklahoma State. They, don't, they do it better than really anybody. That five-man coverage is really good. They have playmakers in all levels of their defense. Keys to the game, you know, for Oklahoma. Keys to the game, you know, for Oklahoma, they need to manufacture some offense. Really, anything at this rate, can't believe I'm saying that. With the last two weeks, it's just been pathetic. They weren't good at home last week. They were not good at all against Baylor. It's just been terrible, really. They have not been able to do a lot. They did a very good job running the ball, I thought, last week. They were still 1 of 10 on third downs. They threw for 84 yards or something like that. It's just, it's very ugly right now. They're playing this defense. Bad recipe for success. That's why, um, you know, for the Pokes, their key is just be disruptive off the edge. Keep contained. Keep Williams in the pocket. I've seen what this guy can do outside of it as a runner and as a passer outside of the pocket. It's just, whew, he's very impressive. That's what will make you hurt. So keep him contained. Be disruptive. The pick, I think it's going to be a close defensive game. I think the Pokes are going to win 24-17. to 17. I think that uh, the Oklahoma defense, they don't travel very well, so they could potentially get blown out in this game. Would not be shocked by being, it being bedlam. They're going to play a tough, valiant effort on defense. I don't think their offense is going to show up in this game, though. Um, why would I think that? The last two weeks have been pathetic, so and now they're playing one of the nation's top defenses. So I think 24-17 is a very viable score. I think you can see the Pokes blow them out in this one. This should be a very good game, though. I think it's going to be a defensive one. A couple years ago, I think both teams had 50-plus points. That's shifted. It's no longer offensive shootouts between these two. Things are going to see a nice defensive battle here. Uh, I do see the Pokes winning here at home. And uh, they will play Baylor in the Big 12 title game. That is my pick. So like, like, leave a comment, subscribe. See you next time.